those of you that caught video one, this is part two of the Hijack Christmas Special where I take over my dad's channel and we're working on my truck as we've dubbed now the Power Choke. Um, as you've seen in the first video, we went through, did our gauge pod set up and all that everything. Do all the clean work before you get to do any of the dirty work. And abused your old man. <laughs> That's elder abuse in many jurisdictions, son. <laughs> so, in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be focusing on going ahead and putting the exhaust system in. We're going to be doing a full 4-inch turbo back system with no muffler. Because it's a Paladini thing, it's got to be loud. So, if it's too loud, we can take it out or can add a muffler in later. It's a great thing about this system. Picked it up on Amazon on the cheap because this, once again, this is all about a budget build. Um, while we're in here, we're going to go ahead and finish up in this part. Um, I started into the driver's side bank the other day of glow plugs. Uh, I ended up getting sick, never got around to doing the other bank. So, now we're going to go ahead and knock out the passenger side bank tonight and go ahead and do the valve cover gaskets. Give you a little quick tutorial on that. So, stay tuned, folks. All right, now my help Michael get this exhaust off of here. I'll work on the back side. All right. Should be all off the hanger, so. Yeah. Okay. should be able to get it out of here. We may have to undo this one shot. Center section out of there. Always cooperative, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, so so what we got here, that's going to be the difference between the factory and that. And let's see if you, uh, <laughs> old pipe fits inside there pretty nice. And I know there's guys out there who say, go six inch. <laughs> yeah, you know, I know everybody needs six inches, but you know what? It's like, it's like this for a street daily driven truck, you know, Pulling a little RV, four inches is four inch exhaust is more than adequate. And you go six inch and you start getting into clearance problems up in the cab and you have to put a cab lift and all that crap on there. It just ain't worth the aggravation. So yeah. moving right along. Yeah. So there's the uh, top side creeper. And if I recall, that band clamp is a uh, 11 millimeter. Yeah, it looks like an 11 or 12 or something. Yeah. He's working on getting the downpipe off the turbo there, so. Okay, so now we're dropping the cross member here. Got our training jack holding everything up so we can get that downpipe out of there. Okay, so there's your visual on the original exhaust system. What's kind of interesting to note is, is it's about got a four inch coming off the turbo anyway. They just neck it down to like three or three and a half. Yeah, the way this system's a three and a half. Yeah. Which, you know, isn't shabby, but still. Be Always. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, getting this downpipe in here a four inch is a King Kamehameha bitch. <laughs> but, you know, there's not a whole lot of room in there. But, uh, I mean, if you went any bigger than that, you'd have to have a cab lift or bent the tabs on the Modified the firewall. Mod modified the firewall, yeah. So, 
I remember it was just as bad on Dana's truck when I did that. And that one was four wheel drive. See, I made it easier. Yeah. Okay, so. There's the turbo flange. He's going to rotate that clamp around to make it a little more accessible, and then we'll. I'm going to get underneath there and hand up the pipe. Now he can finagle it into position. And so you're going to have to leave it just about wide open, son, so you can spread that clamp out to get it on there. Yes, yeah, that's all right there. If I'm not mistaken, I think I had to leave the nut off yeah. and spread it yeah there you go the whole hook thing or whatever there yeah, yeah meanwhile my son's having a uh, uh, preemptive erection <laughs> over here <laughs> and anyway there's uh, the new downpipe in place just kind of sort of snugged up not not locked down yet yeah, four inch truly sun's the best. Yeah, yeah. There Any, anything more than that's just too much. And as it is, the flange pipe coming off the turbo fits inside that four inch pipe. So you're good. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know. Yeah. You're, no, I, well, the research I did and everything, I, for a brief second, I thought about going five inch, but it's just too much. I mean, this is basically a stock motor, and I'm just looking well, for. Well, yeah, like, I don't think a five inch would fit in there. Yeah, We'd yeah. have to modify the firewall and probably and put a cab lift on it. What little bit of benefit it would be, I don't think. I mean, with the stock turbo, you're I don't time think. on a five inch. So yeah, that's gonna be plenty of flow. So I think especially so. Especially with no muffler. <laughs> Has a rotating muffler from the factory. What do you need another one for? Yeah, yeah. You know, it comes from a comes with a rotary muffler, and then yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, this this was for you, Jay Leno. This is. Uh, you know, it's going to have the uh, exhaust muffler delete option, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get it back up in the air and hang the rest of this. Okay, so we kind of got the exhaust kind of mocked up in here, but I'm, I'm concerned about the tip size. I, 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 think, I think this is what, this, this will probably do you, son. You, know, you just kind of weld it on right here like that. Yeah, that, that's what you need, right? Something, something <laughs> about that size as a reference. Yeah. Good sewer dump. Yeah, <laughs> good for 40 horsepower, right? Oh, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we've got all our exhaust tightened up, mounted. I'll uh, show you all that. We're all good. Looks nice and tidy. We're going to weld that last back one back there, but the uh, so you don't see the clamp from behind. All underneath here, these clamps, you won't see them. But, uh, and we got our transmission temperature sensor set right there. And it's all wired up nice and pretty following the original harness. And going all the way up on up in there, so we're all good. We got our EGT sensor in there. So I'd say we're ready to fire this puppy up and see what it sounds like, eh, son? Very, very much down with that. Yeah. All right, son, let's let her rip. The exhaust bolted up and, and uh, put where it needs to be 
So we just went ahead here a few minutes ago and went through and tack welded everything because those four inch clamps, I don't have a whole lot of faith in them, but anyway, so. There's the exhaust. Yeah. I got a funny feeling that thing's going to bellow pretty good going down the road, but we'll see. It was pretty good from here. You have to excuse the, the noise. We got the heat running in here. It's getting a little chilly now later in the day. But uh, in this phase of the work we're doing on the truck is uh, my son needs to change the glow plugs out on the passenger side. He's already got the driver's side done. But uh, that was the hard side. He's going to get the passenger side done this time. That's my Chuck Norris shop heater. Works really good. Now one of the first steps you got to do is you got to take the tube out that runs from the uh, turbo or from the intercooler to the engine. You have to get that out of the way. Then we'll like remove the AC compressor and map sensor vacuum line, which is uh, this right here, going across. And then uh, probably the bracket, maybe, for the AC compressor. Okay, now we got the belt off, and we're going to set the AC compressor out of the way. Now we take the we're going to go ahead and take the AC bracket off because that will make it easier to get the valve cover out. Okay, so now he's got the bracket out of there. Uh, one little quickie tech tip I might uh, want to help you with is when you're taking the connector out of the valve cover gasket there, you may want to uh, use caution because otherwise you'll get major boo-boo. <laughs> You wouldn't think plastic could put a hurting on your finger, but it'll take a chunk out of you. This is the time brake clean can't fix. Yeah. <laughs> yep. If it hurts, it's working. Exactly. Like I said, right now he's working on all the valve cover bolts. And looks like he's got the last one. And you'll see by having that bracket out of there how easy that valve cover comes out. You see how nice and pretty and clean that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Dirt done. <laughs> That's a well cared for engine there. 140,000 miles. Yep, you can see there's your, there's your injector and the, uh, the glow plug right down there if you follow that white wire. 
Okay, and here is the parts washer. Put that puppy on. There we go. And we will get to clean in here. Now you know there's one other thing I want to add to this little piece of video here. This, uh, you saw me soak this rag with uh, the kerosene to wipe down that label and everything. Well, whenever you're done with these, you always want to take these rags and put them outside. You don't want to leave them in the parts washer wet or uh, if they are, you know, they need to be submerged. But if you leave them out in the air, you know, uh, they could uh, spontaneously combust. So just a little helpful tip there so you don't burn your shop down. Okay, so here he has loosened the glow plug with a socket, but you can't always get them out, so you have to take a piece of vacuum line that will fit the tip of the glow plug and spin it out the rest of the way. And then hopefully, if the glow plug, the end of the glow plug isn't mushroomed, you'll be able to get it out. Now I have a pair of forceps, by the way, if you need to grab a hold of it better than that can get you. Okay. So there, home slice. You just got the last one in. Mm -hmm. All right. I guess now it's time to. Well, you're going to check the torque on the uh, rocker pedestals and the injectors. I'm sure to check all that. Okay. And we'll clean up the mating surface and yep. hook up the new valve cover gasket and go back together with it. Yep. So there, he's going to clean up the gasket mating surface and then we'll uh, be going back together with it. You'll see what he's using is uh, basically a piece of Scotch-Brite, a Scotch-Brite pad. Because it won't, uh, it won't, uh, anything that it sheds won't, uh, if it were to shed something it would, wouldn't damage the engine. But the cool thing is with these O-ring type gaskets, you know, there's not a whole lot that has to be cleaned off. You just have to do a cursory cleaning there. And once he's done, we'll wipe it down a rag with a rag soaked with some carbon choke cleaner, and we'll be good to go. Okay. Now our gasket mating surface is all nice and spiffy clean. back here and uh, with our gasket one another little tech tip here if you're putting a new uh, a new valve cover gasket in these uh, uh, these plugs go in very 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 tight and if you're not careful you may accidentally put them in incorrectly so it's always a good idea to seat them into one of your old glow plugs first just to make sure that the the connector is, uh, uh, you know, the, the connector's not bent or anything like that. And uh, just a little, little good measure when you're doing one of these. And of course, with all the wires sticking out everywhere, you know, you kind of got a little finagling to do at first to get it situated. Sometimes just better to start from the back since that's the worst hardest part to get to and next you want to run your injector wires up there you always want to be real careful they're very fine connectors they have a little wire bail on them once you get all your wires connected you want to Give it a quick double check, make sure nothing's near a push rod or anything like that. And then we got our nice shiny spiffy valve cover here. I'll hand that to you.
gives it a quick double check with a rag, make sure it's all nice and clean. And Of course, it goes without saying for us in the biz, you don't ever tighten any of them until you get them all in. Oh, yeah. Get them all in and started. Then you can start torquing them down. And now, once you get all your screws in, then you can start torquing them down. And you want, of course, use a cross pattern. Uh, I always kind of like starting in the middle and working my way out towards the ends. Usually if you start from the middle and work your way out, you won't go wrong. They have a block on them, so you just tighten them down and snug them up. It's not like an old cork gasket where if you tighten them too much, you squish the gasket out. Somewhere around there, somewhere around good and tight. Yeah. But not nearly as tight, as tight as shit and then some. Exactly. <laughs> just before it breaks. <laughs> I guess while we're in here, my son's going to go ahead and change out the glow plug relay. Always never hurts to do that when you're changing out the glow plugs. Okay, out with the old and in with the new. Nice spiffy new Motorcraft relay. Looks all right. Well, we got a nice new glow plug relay in there. Now it's time to start going back together with the rest of this mess. I guess we'll start with that big bracket, the idler pulley bracket, and the mounting for the AC compressor, and go from there. Okay, so your like your top top bolt there is a long one. And that one's a long one. And then you got one down there at the bottom like he's working on there, that's a short one. And then you got one on the other side over there, it's a bit of a shorty. Uh. Alright, he's putting the, putting the intercooler piping back in. We got our bracket in, we got the compressor seated. I'm fixing to run these down. Snug him up in a second. together. It's pretty clean valve cover. New gasket, glow plugs, glow plug relay. All that we're good to go. Now all he's gonna do is hook his battery back up and then we'll be good. Alright so we are done. Thanks everybody for watching and uh, stay tuned. We'll uh, be doing the hutch mod uh, well we'll do we'll do the oil change and the the shift kit and the tranny tomorrow and then we'll do the hutch mod so anyway again thanks for watching and stay tuned <laughs>